So you've had a few minutes to digest it. How are you feeling about the fight? Uh, I mean, it was all right. I didn't finish him. It was a fight. kind of wish I would have finished him. I kind of fought like a coward. But you get a guy that backs up like that that does have good counters. You know, you, you, you second guess yourself on overcommitting. I overcommitted once he hit me. So it's kind of being a coward. But it's all right. It happens. Everyone's allowed to be a bitch once in their life. <laughs> Uh, you mentioned on the broadcast you were very upset that you got hit with the, the upper. Oh, my God. What an embarrassing punch to get hit with, a shot to get hit with. That's like the, that's the one that, like, when he fights from now on, they're going to play that as his highlight fight. I'm going to be his highlight fight. But, yeah, no, nah, I mean, he, he's a stand-up man. I, I would expect him to hit me with something. To, to be fair, at least it didn't knock you out. Like, then it really would be on the, the highlight reel of all time. Like, oh, man, yeah. No, he doesn't really hit very hard, you know. I mean, he throws hard. Like, he threw he threw some heat on some punches. I think the first right he came out and he threw, I was like, oh, shit. We're not, we're not messing around. <laughs> all right, let's go. The last thing on that particular elbow, when, that, when you get hit with that in the fight, do you just completely ignore it and carry on, or do you actually have a split second where you're like, I can't believe I just got tagged with that? I was pissed off. It was just like, you mother... Like, I was just mad, you know? I was mad and, like, yeah, I was just mad. You know, I never, I'm not mad at him for doing it. I mean, if anything, congratulations. It's mad at me for, you know, sucking. There's a little bit of talking in between you two in there? Uh, no, I mean, he, he was a good guy. He just raised his hand. I just wanted to inform that he lost. You know, I mean, like, no, no hard feelings. It was a good fight, but he lost every round. Did you, do you feel particularly banged up or anything, any lingering injuries? I'm having my chin, chin is sore. He kind of hit me in the throat once. Kind of a, that was kind of a dirty shot, Jocko. But uh, I could probably put my chin up in there, so it's probably my fault. But no, I'm, I'm not too bad. Just a, couple, a week or two off, and I should be right as rain. Uh, any, do you want a quick return? Or you want uh, I, mean, I mean, I always like a couple weeks. I always like a, like a month or so for a break. But, uh, yeah, no, let's get back in there. Let's get back in there and make some fights. Make some money. So over here, right? Make money. <laughs> I saw a couple of people online saying this, and I think it comes down to the talking thing. Does a fight with Kevin Holland interest you at all? Uh, I mean, I don't give. A, I don't care, man. I'll fight anybody. It, there's no interest for any fights. I've never. When the every time the UFC's ever offered me a fight, I don't know who the hell they are, and I just say yes. Last thing for me. Did you hear from your uncle? Oh God, my uncle. No, no, I was just joking about that. I was joking about that. It's more my dad, but he's dead, so fuck him, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. So family reunions are fun times, huh? Oh my God, I avoid them like the plague. <laughs> <laughs> so but hey, listen, if you're a UFC fighter and you don't have some kind of daddy issues or kind of fucking issues, like, what are you doing here getting punched for money? What's wrong with you? Go to school, be go to college, grab a microphone, be a journalist. <laughs> So I will go back to, it, and I know you're joking, even though you said, you know, when he hit you and then you were kind of a little hesitant, you called it cowardice, but would you, wouldn't you say with your experience that was just the smart part of you deciding to not rush back into things? Well, he was losing, and he knew he was losing, so if he was going to win, the only way for him to win would be to knock me out. So, I mean, yeah, I was a little hesitant, but, you know, you should never, you should never fear failure. One of, the, one of the worst things a human can do is fear failure. If you always feel fa fear failure, you'll never succeed. Now, is there anything out there? I know when we talked to you beforehand, you know, you said that there's no real game plan. You kind of just go out and do things. There was a point, I think it was the second round or maybe the third round, where uh, you were standing at the corner. Your corner kind of left, and you were just kind of there pacing. I think mm -hmm. you're maybe even talking back to him. Is that one of those moments where it's like the, it, you tell the team, like, I don't need to hear anything. Just let me, just let yeah. me add him. Well, I was, no, I was talking to him. I was telling myself, be a man. I was like, just, you know, I was, I was <laughs> it was just telling him, be a fucking man, man. Go forward. Fucking stop backing up. Stop, you know, be better. Stop being a coward. I was, I was, I was just repeating myself, be a man. Stop being a coward. Like, die in here. And I was just re repeating what I wanted to happen. I like that. I know we saw recently that that worked very well for Rose as well. I, I, before with Rose's last fight, Rose was kind of talking to her as well. Is that something that you normally do and that you do verbalize a little bit when you, when you catch on that you're, maybe your performance isn't yeah. giving you what you want to, to kind of kick start it a little bit? You know, I'll give you the best advice about the human mind that everybody needs to acknowledge. Humans are cowards. The natural state of being a human is being a coward. Every time you wake up, your brain tells you not to do this, not to do that, not to do this. You got to find that little voice in your head that says, hey, brain, shut the hell up. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I don't, you know. So it's just you're always battling your inner coward, and we all have one. So after fighting motivational speak, speaking work, that's, that, that's, <laughs> no, that's, that's what you're going for? No, I'm, I'm a horrible. I'm usually just, hey, stop being a fucking pussy, man. Do you want to be here? 
man up, let's go. <laughs> some pay, some places might pay money for that. Yeah, for that maybe, maybe one day. Um, um, and, and I'm sorry if he did uh, if he asked as well. Was there anything that Jocko sort of surprised you with? I mean, you said you mentioned his toughness, and he got you a couple times. At, yeah. You know, with the elbow. Was there anything else? The early in the round, he threw like a hard right hand. And it was kind of like, oh man, like whenever whenever somebody throws a punch like that, there's a moment where you start thinking like. If that landed, that would have sucked, you know? <laughs> so that was like the first, like, oh, that sucks. And then as the rounds went on, I was like, he's not really looking to hit me, he's just looking to throw. There's a difference between someone who throws with accuracy and someone just is throwing. He just throws. And then lastly for me. Besides was, the elbow, that was accurate. Fuck <laughs> and, and there was that fun moment at the very end after you uh, got your arm raised where you kind of kind of joked a little bit and you said something you, I think you pointed at your lip of his handiwork oh. or whatever but what sort of uh, words do you guys say there no. at the very end of each other so I said I pointed at his blood and I was like oh I think I have your blood on me I kind of <laughs> like it and then my corner man's like no your chin's bleeding Chris Curtis so I'm like I'm like damn it now I feel like an asshole but you know <clears throat> I run my mouth a lot and you know never more I mean I I could have slipped instead of bobbed or weaved instead of bobbed and I could have been knocked out and he would be here talking about it this game is a game of inches. Underdogs win all the time. And, uh, it, I mean, he could have knocked me out at any moment. So, mad respect for Jocko. And I, I appreciate him coming in here and fighting me. I, I know I could be kind of a cunt and I could run my mouth a lot. But, you know, outside, outside of fighting, he's a man. I'm a man and he has my respect. How do you celebrate the win? <laughs> Go home. Do nothing. Think about fucking... I don't know. I'm usually, I'm usually like really happy. And then like once the endorphins like start fading away, I become a miserable fuck. And I'm just like, I need to train again. This sucks. I'm not happy anymore. I need to go buy something to make me feel good. <laughs> Congrats on the victory. Thanks guys. Congrats on the, on the big win. Um, voices are not, you know, whether humans are cowards, a great boy, a boy, a voice, uh, a boxing legend, Teddy Atlas uh, tweeted about, he said, you are, tonight you never wasted anything and only threw one in position. How do you feel about getting praise from, you know, a oh, man. boxing coach? Not only that, man, just the fact he's watching the UFC, it just shows, you know, you get these high level guys. I mean, there was a, a Raiders NFL player watching the UFC, like, this is one of the greatest sports in the world, the greatest athletes. And, uh, you know, and I, and I thank him for watching. I, I thank him for his kind words. You know, it means a lot from somebody who lives in the gym and tries to hone his craft. It's a, it's an honor. Thank you. All right, good job. Thank you for the great fight tonight. Thank you. All right, guys. We're good. All right, fellas. Ladies, gentlemen. Ugh.